In today's video, we'll be covering a bit that most people have, but very few know how to use. It combines the power of an upcut and the precision of a downcut. And that bit is the compression bit. We'll be covering what it is, how to use it, and what most people don't understand. Let's get right into it. So how a compression bit is designed is that the bottom portion is an upcut and then it switches over to a down cut, right? And so whenever you put the material in there, the down cut is pushing the chips downwards, up cut is pushing it upwards, this pink spot is where all the chips collect, the part really doesn't wanna move that much, and you have a clean top side because of the down cut and a clean bottom side because of the up cut. The problem with most compression bits is where this transition part is right here, right? That little pink part. Okay. We're gonna label these A and A. Why? Because they're the same length typically. So if you get a quarter inch compression bit, the diameter is going to be the exact same length as the transition, more or less within a couple thousandths of an inch. The problem is if you do not go deep enough to go past that transition point right there, you're only gonna see the upcut side and you're gonna get a ton of tear out. Not only is the upcut side going to make chips, that transition point right there is really hard on edges, right? Where it's kind of transitioning from that upcut to that downcut. So whenever you got a CNC and you got that quarter inch compression bit and you're like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever, you quickly realize you have to go deeper than a quarter inch to actually utilize that. And if you have a hobby CNC with a smaller spindle on it, you're not going to go 0.375 inches per pass and your machine's gonna like it, right? It's gonna scream, it's gonna bellyache. No! And so you have to understand that most compression bits were made for the cabinet industry where they're cutting out these large parts. And so what do smaller CNC users do? Well, there is a solution. Let me erase this and then show you. So if a standard compression bit has that one-to-one -one ratio, what you have to do is lower that ratio, right? Well, there is a bit out there and it has a one to 0.5 ratio. So if this is a quarter inch, this is then one eighth of an inch. Or if this is six millimeters, this is three millimeters. And that bit is called a mortise compression. Now, a mortise compression is fantastic because it has that, let's say that two to one ratio or that one to half ratio. But the reason not everybody makes only mortise compression bits is because that tip is kind of fragile, right? And so having that little extra meat for that upcut is kind of important. But all in all, those are the two different types of compression bits. Now, what we did at CIC Workshop we designed one that kind of was that middle ground right here. So let me hop over to the CNC and show you how ours works. And then I'll show you how standard ones work so you can make your own judgment call on your CNC. So what we did with our bits is a one to two thirds ratio. So a mortise is a one to 0.5. The standard bit is a one to one and we're right there in the middle. And why that's important is that you can take a quarter inch bit and instead of having to go over a quarter inch depth of pass on a standard CNC, you can now go as little as 0.1875. And that's just so important because sometimes you're pocketing hard materials, right? And it can't go down that far because it just bogs down your router or your spindle. That's the purpose, right? And we have it an eighth inch, three sixteenths, three eighths, and obviously quarter inch. So the first test I'm going to run on the CNC is going to be with a standard compression and our quarter inch compression. And we're going to be cutting 0 0.20 inches. And I'll show you what that looks like. So notice on this top circle, those nice clean edges. Now we went 0 0.20 inches deep. If we were to go 0.25 inches deep, like the other bits recommend, that's gonna be a lot on that spindle and it might not be able to do it. So now let's put in the other one and run it at 0 0.20 inches and you'll see what I'm talking about. All 
All right, so after cutting, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Both are ran at 0 0.20 inches deep. And once again, on that standard bit, you still have that upcut section and that transition section that you're working through. And on our bit, which has that two thirds ratio, you have a nice clean edge all the way around it. So now let's do a profile cut all the way through with a piece of quarter inch Baltic birch to show you the difference there. That was uh, quite scary. <laughs> This is another example of the difference between the two bits. So this is quarter inch Baltic birch. And obviously I didn't cut all the way through, but our bit on the top cut all the way through more or less. And there's very little chipping except where I didn't put a tab. And then on the standard one, you do get tear out right here along that edge and that edge and quite a bit of fuzzies as well. So now you know how they're designed, how they work, and real life examples. But the question still remains, why would you ever use them? And that, my friends, is the golden question, right? Why would you use a compression bit over an upcut or a downcut, right? There is a couple examples, let's say on the industrial side, you use it to cut out cabinet parts all day long. But on hobby CNC's, I do find a couple different uses that I want to show you. The first one is going to be making profile cuts on smaller parts. And the second one is another thing that I didn't think was very useful, but I found it to be very, very useful. Now, if you guys use a compression bit on your CNC from time to time, let me know in the comments how you use it so others can learn as well. So this is a pretty good use case right here. So let's say you have a thinner material, let's say eighth inch, quarter inch, or three eighths thick Baltic birch or hardwood, whatever you want, right? Traditional compression bits, you could never use for it because you couldn't go down a quarter inch with a quarter inch bit because it's gonna hog up that spindle. And even if you use one of our bits, it's still a quarter inch wide and you have a lot of torque. And so a good use case is putting a 3 16 or an eighth inch compression bit in there and actually cutting it all the way out in one pass. So what I'm gonna do is stick this 3 16 bit in there, cut all the way through this quarter inch material in one pass, and what you'll notice is it's not gonna slip, and of course you're gonna have those clean edges on both sides. So profile cuts on thin materials are super helpful. Let's look at it. So this is such a good example because once again, that, that quarter inch bit would have been quite loud going through here. It could have did it obviously, but it all depends on your CNC. But with that 3 16 bit, if I were to cut all the way through in all the spots, let's just see. On the spots I actually cut all the way through, what you will notice is now it's clean on both sides, right? And you didn't have to switch up bits a lot, right? And the only sanding I have is a little bit. So profile cuts going all the way through is a perfect use case for it. And once again, that's what the cabinet shops do with these 3 8 bits right here. They'll go all the way through it in one pass. Now the other use case is you don't actually have to go all the way through, right? You can actually do pockets with it. So let me show you what one of these bits look like when doing pockets. And another note is that ours are actually chip breaker compressions. And what a chip breaker is, it's in between a rougher and a finisher. And so it has a serrated edge, but then it's followed up by a finisher. So serration, then finisher, serration, then finisher. And what that's going to do is whenever you're cutting out something like this or doing a deep pocket like I'm about to show you, it's just going to have a nicer finish, not scream as loud, and it's gonna have a little bit of that rougher effect and a little bit of that finisher. It's pretty cool. Let's do some pocketing.
All right, so it just got done cutting out this tray and notice that there is no fuzzies on the bottom, no fuzzies on the top because of that compression. And this pocket is really good right here. And so you may be like, well, Ryan, I already do trays and it works great with just a down cut bit. Perfect. I'm not saying that you have to go out and get a compression bit. This video is just kind of teaching you what it can do and why you may want it in your bit repertoire, right? So if you're doing a whole bunch of trays and you just want to have one bit and a nice clean cutoff like this, or do profile cuts all the way through, that's the use of the compression bit, right? Literally anything an up cut and down cut can do, the main thing you have to remember is you have to get past that transition point so you don't have a lot of fuzzies and a lot of tear out. Now, if you are interested in any of our bits on CIC Workshop, I will have a chart on there with the minimum points that you have to go down to get past that transition in order to help y'all guys out if you are interested. But that is a compression bit. You could absolutely love it and use it on everything, or you say, I'm good. I don't need it in my repertoire, right? So it's really up to you. I'm just giving you as much information as I possibly know about compression bits. So I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always, guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.